Welcome to LHG's Aquarium everybody. Today I want to talk about emergency planning related to power outages. Power outages are one of those things that for the most part are unpredictable in knowing when they're going to happen and how long they're going to occur. And having emergency plans ready and in place is a very important step to take as an aquarium owner. You need to be prepared at all times for these power outages. And while there's a number of steps you could take, for instance, I have a backup generator with a transfer switch also set up for this aquarium. It also requires some manual intervention to get that plan in place. The generator has to be put in place. A fuel tank has to be attached to it. Power cords need to be run to a generator plug. And then a procedure to transfer power over to the generator from the house properly needs to take place so that I can power the aquarium. Now, I cannot expect that anybody is going to be able to do that quickly. And it could take a lot of time. Something that might take me five or ten minutes to do might take an hour or more for somebody that does not know what they're doing or understand. As they struggle through steps, the clock is ticking away and your animals could start to die. That's why having an emergency plan in place that anybody can implement is extremely important. When I mean anybody, I mean your spouse, your children, your neighbors, friends, other family members, whoever can be a first responder or is watching your aquarium, you need to have something in place that they can take action with quickly and easily. And that's where the emergency kit comes in. Having an emergency kit filled with emergency supplies that are going to be used for your initial emergency plan during a power outage is incredibly important. I assembled this kit and notice it's all in a tote, it's all together so if something happens nobody has to go looking for items including myself. They're all in one place together where they can be easily accessed and easily put in place. But what do you mean by having something easy to put in place? Let's take a look and see what I have in this emergency kit. Now. Because this is such a large system, one of the biggest things that I look at when I do emergency planning is looking at what is the most important thing. And in an aquarium, the most important thing, whether it be fresh water, salt water, brackish water, doesn't really matter for the most part, is that you need to provide oxygen to the animals that are living in that aquarium. Over anything else, if you don't provide oxygen, it doesn't matter if you can provide heating or light. Those things don't matter if there's no oxygen in the tank. Everything is going to die. That's why the most important piece of equipment that every aquarium owner should have, regardless of whether or not you have battery backups for your pumps, you should still have battery operated air pumps. And this is why. This is something that is fast, easy, and simple for anybody to be able to put in place quickly. They can open this up quickly and easily. All they gotta do is pop it open, put in a couple of D-cell batteries, close it, press a button, put it in the tank, and you're done. Now, in my case, I have some battery-operated air pumps that also come with an AC plug. Now, this doesn't actually power this pump. This plug is actually just used to monitor power, and if power is lost, it will actually kick on the battery operated air pump all by itself. So it's a nice little feature to have if you're going to go on trips or vacations, which eventually I will do. I will put these in place and have them plugged in with batteries in them so that if there is a power outage while I'm away from home, the first emergency step can be taken without anybody having to do anything other than making sure that they turned on. Of course, Having battery operated air pumps is nice. Think about how many you should need. For the 1600 gallon system, I have a dozen of these battery operated air pumps. And I'm going to put some instructions in this kit for whoever's washing my tank that if I'm not home for whatever reason and they're not already at standby mode, if I'm not out of town, I'm going to tell them how many of these pumps I want in each one of the displays and every one of the sump tanks. And you heard me right, I want these put into my sump tanks as well. Reason being, your sump tanks, especially in a reef aquarium, 
are going to have a lot of microfauna living in them and bacteria. If those areas also lose oxygen, that stuff will also die. When it dies and you do regain power, while you might have been maintaining oxygen in your aquarium and you weren't in your sump tank, well guess what? All the ammonia and everything that died in there, whatever toxins it released, is going to get pumped into your main aquarium. So remember, you want to keep oxygen going in all of your tanks in your saltwater systems, or even freshwater systems for that matter. While also having battery operated air pumps, you got to have batteries. Now I got enough batteries to power all these pumps and then I have extra batteries too. This should give a good amount of time of battery power. I did test one of these out and I let it go for about four hours and it was still kicking. Don't know how long it's ever going to last but I kept extra batteries because within a few hours of a big outage if power is not restored and I'm not home or a generator can't be hooked up then there's some other serious issues going on. So have battery operated air pumps and have a supply of batteries. Now these diesel batteries I have, they got a 10 year shelf life. So even if they just sit in the kit, let them sit in the kit. And don't borrow from the kit unless you intend to replace them immediately. Because if you borrow batteries from the kit and then suddenly need it, you might find yourself without any batteries. Other things I kept in here, a small little utility knife so that the batteries could be easily opened. I also have a filtration pad in here that will soak up everything. It has carbon, it has metal filters in it. This is something that outside of a power outage emergency could be used as well. Just so that if something happens, there's one available, you don't have to go to a store. Or if you need some kind of filtration because the fish aren't looking good, you could at least cut some pieces out of this and stick it into the tanks to do a little bit of absorption of toxins. One final thing I put in the kit for now is just some plumber's putty. I don't think it would serve that much of a use, but it's something to have handy if there is some kind of leak. Someone could put it over the top of that leak and maybe try to slow it down. I have seen this work with cracked aquariums where people have done this, and it has stopped the leak temporarily until they could take bigger actions. For now, those are the big items I'm going to keep in this. I'll also be putting an emergency contact list in along with some basic instructions. Now beyond that with my aquarium with emergency planning, the other thing that I have taken the action on is I have labeled everything. All the circuit breakers are labeled on the panels, all the outlets related to the aquarium are also labeled so that any outlet in my fish room or related to the aquarium, they all have a label on them. I've also taken the time to label a lot of the equipment, important valves, things like that, that during an emergency you might need someone to take some additional actions, whether it be a power outage or another type of tank emergency. It's always important to have things labeled up so that people can help you out when you're not there. Talking to someone through this on the phone without some kind of basic instructions or easy to read labels can be very difficult. So have that all in place before you get into one of these emergencies. Really hope that I've been able to share some, some good content with everybody here and really make you think about emergency planning. Remember, make sure it's a plan that you can put in place in case you're not going to be at your home or business or wherever your aquarium might be. Of course, if you got comments, questions on today's video, please leave them down below. And hey, if you got some good tips or things that you think I should keep in this emergency kit as well, go ahead, put them down in the comments down below. I hope that this fosters a nice discussion in the comments about having some emergency kits in place, tips and tricks that other people have beyond what I put in here. And I hope it gives some people some good ideas to be prepared for emergencies, because there's nothing worse than reading about these emergencies that happen on forums where folks did not have emergency plans in place, they were unprepared, and they lost all of their animals in their tanks, which is never easy to go through. If you liked today's video, of course, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. Let me know you like the content. If you didn't like it, that's okay too. You can give me a thumbs down. As always, thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you on the next video.